This video is for everyone that's searching for a remote working job. You might identify with one of the stories in here that made you renew that search. Here we go. Who was your coworker from hell? Story 1. I quit smoking due to a coworker that would follow me to every smoke break to talk about their problems when I needed some Godzilla me time. It's been three years and I still haven't bothered to pick the habit back up. Edit to answer some questions. 1. In real life, I'm super introverted. They just started joining me one day and decided I am their best friend ever. 2. They were trying to get me to smoke more often so they could talk at me more. They do not and have never smoked. I was intending on quitting at some point, but I would probably still be smoking without this factor. 3. They were very upset when I quit, so much that they started crying. I can never tell them they're the reason I quit, even though I probably owe them my life. 4. I split the word Godzilla for emphasis. Godzilla. I'm sure you realize that's not the actual word, but, you know, I gotta be careful because of the Google censor algorithm. 5. They're nice enough and want to be helpful, but they're also oddly possessive and would get angry with me and mess with my stuff when I wouldn't go on breaks with them. Our shift would probably drown without this person, very hard working. But I've spoken with management and been on the verge of going to HR over their weird control issues. They started escalating their behavior shortly before the pandemic hit. The one person that tolerated their demands for an extended period of time got fired, putting 100% of their focus on me. Luckily, telling them they've crossed the line and refusing to engage with them for a day gets them to back off for the chance of having someone to talk to again. Working from home has been the best thing ever, and I'm worried about going back and having to figure out what to do with the dynamic. And we're starting off strong. It's stories like this that make me glad I get to work remotely. Texts and voice chats are much easier to deal with. I don't care about pizza parties. I can buy my own pizza, thank you very much. Story 2. Okay, this may not be my most hellish coworker, but I have a weird one for you guys. My first job ever was at a coffee shop chain. The location I was at was connected to a gas station slash convenience store. We kinda had an L-shaped corner of the store. As such, we didn't have a ton of space, including room for the larger ovens needed to cook bagels. So instead, we would have our bagels delivered to us from another, larger location down the road. For a while, the baker was this really weird, quiet girl who seemed to lack social self-awareness. She always seemed a little unclean, and just lingered a little too long around people without really saying anything. Honestly, she just put out not-quite-right vibes. Anyway, one day I head in at six and there are no bagels. I asked my manager if the store down the road was running behind or if they had a call-out. Both were fairly common. My manager points to the rack of newspapers the convenience store had by the entrance and tells me to read the headline. Apparently, the weird girl was in FBI custody. Basically, there was a couple who had kidnapped a minor. I won't get into why, as it may be a trigger warning for some. Weird girl was renting a room from the couple, knew what was happening, and never told anyone. Somehow, they were all found out and arrested, and the young girl was reunited with her family. Reading the story, the whole thing felt very Twilight Zone. I'd agree it's not the weirdest. At least it's not the weirdest while she was at work. She seemed to do her job. I don't know if anyone complained about her. In a way, she epitomizes having a good work-life balance. She was able to keep that stuff separate and maintain a good work ethic. Story 3. There was a person that was in the aircraft qualification training squadron at the same time as me. He wasn't an intentionally terrible person, but his lack of self-awareness made any interaction around him difficult and exhausting. He washed out of another flying career field. In the first sims, before the flying phase, he refused to use established procedures, resulting in degraded ability to provide required data to external players. Managed to fail his first instructional ride, despite it being nearly impossible to fail if you show up. He could not figure out how to take leave despite several people walking him through the process. Rather than trying to solve any problem, he would announce it to the rest of the room, and if no one jumped in to help him, ask the nearest person. 
He managed to frustrate and time-jack the kindest instructor I know because he didn't have a basic understanding of a training airspace. In a bid to get back to more pressing and more likely to be completed tasks, he gave me an apologetic look as he suggested that Lieutenant Pubspotter was a smart student and could probably help him get up to speed. I could not. Maybe he wasn't from hell, but he sounds like he just didn't qualify for this job. He was just too in over his head. Was this something this guy wanted to do for so long? It sounds like he just so desperately wants to be in the aircraft field in some way. It makes me wonder if he ever passed here. Story 4 I briefly had a co-worker at my current job at a local grocery store. We'll just call him Fred. Fred is one of those people who's always talking on his phone in the break room, and that's my personal pet peeve at work. More often than not, he's usually arguing with his girlfriend, and he doesn't seem to care that anyone's listening. He'd do other annoying, gross things, like chewing with his mouth wide open and wiping his boogers all over the place. But then there was one day when he tried to flush a hot pocket down the toilet. Needless to say that it didn't play out so well, and that temporarily put an end to our closest employee restroom right by the break room. He surprisingly didn't get fired over that. But he did get fired when one of his old high school teachers came in shopping and he threw a whole sack of potatoes at her. She was an elderly woman who got seriously injured, and both the ambulance and the cops had to get involved. I never did hear about what happened to his old teacher, but Fred, on the other hand, is currently in jail for not only assaulting his teacher, but he apparently also attacked his lawyer for reasons unknown. That's Fred. Story 5. My old boss could be really good, but here are some of the things leading up to her getting fired. She would berate people into taking her random vitamins. She would insist that we all attend her hot yoga class. She would get people to do it by putting them on the clock. She would pinch your arm if she didn't like what you were saying to a customer. I had to share a room with her at a conference. She slept naked. She got so drunk she went to hang out with a random couple in their room, came back, and puked all over our room. She would climb ladders in front of customers while wearing tiny dresses. And on and on and on. Edit. Wow, I did not expect anyone to even react to this. Thanks for the silver. I worked at a fancy bath bomb store in the UK. No, she was not my type. My type is men. She would pit me and the other floor managers against each other. We would have to go to her apartment when we were on the clock to make the schedule. She didn't own a microwave because... The microwaves, I think? She really hated our only male floor manager. Probably because he'd applied for her job before she got it. He was no threat, so I didn't get why. Right before she got fired, we had a team meeting in a park. Employees brought their dogs, smoked, and were downright mean to her. She brought it all on herself, but it was awkward to watch. Story 6 a few years ago, back at my old job, we hired a web developer who on her first day on the job yelled at our CTO because her mouse didn't work. She proceeded to be not just unpleasant, but actively hostile to everyone she interacted with. I came in one morning at like 7 a.m. because I needed to test some stuff and saw her at her desk eating a box of 7-Eleven wings and chugging a two-liter Diet Coke. She then threw the box of bones into a bin and missed, spilling it everywhere, and she yelled really loudly, Freaking Godzilla it! Arr! While me and three others were in the office, we all gave her the benefit of the doubt of extreme antisocial programmer personality, or maybe had personal problems to deal with, and everyone tried to be nice. The last straw was when she berated the most beloved guy in the office, one of the IT personnel that everyone liked, and she gave him a sort of schoolmaster-style talking down to in front of the whole office because her internet was slow. She was fired within like two weeks of hiring. Also, she smelled like old eggs and mildew. Another reason why it's good to look for remote work. I think a lot of managers that want everybody to go back to the office think that people will always be able to play off the positive energy of each other. I don't think any of them take into account that there are some people that just continuously generate negative energy. 
It just brings everybody down. This person got fired, but there are some of those people that just managed to stay on for who knows what reason. It doesn't do productivity or anybody else any good at all. Story 7. He was in his 50s, had often uncontrolled diabetes, was 6 foot 4 inches tall. I was 24 and a foot shorter. Normally, he was a teddy bear, but when his blood sugar got low, he would get violent. He tried throwing punches at me for suggesting he get a Coke from the vending machine in the hall. Good thing he's slow and clumsy in that state. When we were in the truck together once and it started making a weird sound, I wanted to take it into the shop, and he insisted we didn't need to by yelling at me and pounding his fists on the dash. But we were going to a remote area, and I didn't want to have to try and find help if the truck broke down and the radio didn't work. I had to call search and rescue on him once because he didn't come back to the truck after doing a transect biology job. You guessed it. He had low blood sugar and was not able to find his way back to the truck. He had no education or experience in biology, but he just couldn't be fired from his job driving a plow. With his propensity to let himself get hypoglycemic, he couldn't drive either. So they shuffled him to the wildlife department because he had an interest in wildlife. I was basically his babysitter. Story 8. Worked with a guy that was a supervisor in another department. Dumb and a jerkwad. Bad combo. Would constantly insist that I do things that violated OSHA rules or were physically impossible. Wanted me to work on a 20-ton bridge crane while he was using it. Obviously, I said no. Every time I would refuse one of these ridiculous demands, he would send out an email with everyone CC'd, from the area manager, plant manager, all the way down to my boss. Soon after I left for a better job, he was fired and they closed his email account as he was writing a manifesto. I heard they hired armed security to keep a lookout for him for the next month. Edit. I forgot to mention that this supervisor was missing most of his front teeth. He came back to work after a vacation, missing teeth told everyone it was an auto accident or some junk. His cousin worked there at the time and told everyone there was no auto accident, that the two of them were at a family barbecue. Well, this supervisor got drunk and started running his mouth, and I guess kept ragging on about a relative's wife. And long story short, the relative ended up on top of him, pummeling him in the face and knocking out teeth. Story 9 he told the general manager that he might be a bit late for a shift due to his second job. When the GM reluctantly said, okay, he apparently took this as thinking he had free reign to come and go as he pleased. He'd show up anywhere from 7.30 to 8.30 for his 7 o'clock shift. Then, when the doors closed, he'd insist he had to head out and he had an early morning the following morning, leaving everyone else to do the closing work. He also had other issues, like being rude to customers and other employees. People mostly kept quiet until one day a higher-level manager had to sub on night shift. When he went to leave early, and the rest of us with the work, the manager flipped. If you lay a single finger on that money before this work is completely done, don't bother coming back. The guy insisted he had permission and left anyway. When our GM returned and he tried to come back, our manager said, You warned me you were going to be late one time, and I never once gave you permission to otherwise start late or leave early. Clean your locker out now. I think when there's older generations complaining about the younger generation's work ethic, this is what they think about. They think we overextend. They think we take advantage of some request. That's not it at all. I think younger generations are happy to do the work that they're paid for, but not a second more than that. This guy was not following that kind of ethic. Story 10. Rick, the misogynistic... <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounds like the name of an indie band. He was my lead four years ago. I am a female engineer. The only one on that team. He was always checking my work and sent someone out with me. I thought it was because we had never worked together before. Then one day in a group meeting with the entire group, he said, Women don't make good engineers because they can only make decisions based on emotions. Everyone's jaws dropped 
and they looked at me. I was so shocked. All I could come up with was, yeah, because that's how I figured out how much to put into my 401k. I left the group. He invited me to his retirement party. I told him I was happy he was retiring. He thought it was a compliment. My current worst coworker is a lady that always has the attitude of, you're wrong because you don't understand. There are two of us ladies now because she's annoying. Not horrible though, so that's a big step up. Story 11. This one that thought she knew everything and would steal people's comments. You tell her a fact and then she disagrees. I was talking about Arrested Development and Bob Loblaw. She stole that conversation. I told her about me going to a festival. She went to and had the exact experience. Someone asked if I was a fish because I was chugging water. She asked me the same question later. She'd say a random fact that everyone knows about and make it out to be like she just discovered it. She'd argue with people who knew more about a certain topic, like she was an expert. She talked too much junk, almost got fired for it, which she did, embellishes stories to get people in trouble. She's mildly racist and a hypocrite. What made it worse was when she did something offensive and we went to the manager. The manager, also mildly racist, would defend her and say, that's just who she is. She's the reason I left a decently good job. It got too toxic and it wasn't worth staying. Story 12. We had a sysadmin who would come to work and run his real estate business from his desk while he was supposed to be working. The whole time coughing and sneezing and sniffling constantly. We called him itchy. He would also call friends and family and have hours-long conversations with them while we all had to listen. He picked up the name Thanksgiving Dinner Guy for using the break room, full kitchen, to cook entire meals that wouldn't be out of place at a family gathering. One of the offices in another wing had a sheet by the door for people to log when they saw him and what he was cooking that day. He didn't like any of us, the feeling was mutual, and left books like Jerks at Work on his desk. When he finally got fired, they found out he never did any of his sysadmin work. No backups, no password changes, no log monitoring. Did this guy even have any training in sysadmin work? I realize it's specialized training, and I don't want to knock anyone that does this, but I don't think the training for much of the sysadmin work is too complex. Sounds like this guy treated his job as just a WeWork desk. Did this guy at least share his meals with anyone? Story 13. I used to work part-time at a shipping warehouse, and at one point we ended up hiring this 16-year-old kid. He made a ton of mistakes that we ended up having to fix for him, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt at first, just because he was new. But not only did he never learn from his mess-ups, but he was incredibly lazy and lacked any self-awareness. There were instances where he was given a task, but then he'd either mess around on his phone most of the time, hide out in the bathroom for like 45 minutes and then hoped we wouldn't notice, or just whine to my supervisor that he didn't want to do whatever he was assigned. Because of that, he would often take half the day to do like 30 minutes of work and would then complain that he had too much work piled on top of him. It was ridiculous. He lasted maybe a month before my supervisors let him go. Story 14. She was a lady in her 50s. We worked at a doctor's office. Nothing was ever her fault. She could not take even the nicest constructive criticism and constantly complained about everything. One of my nicest co-workers ever, who was around the same age, so not an ageism thing, often was the recipient of her blame and because she never took responsibility. It was regularly the same issues she never learned to correct. They bickered a lot after a couple years of this. One day, the nice co-worker went to the car to grab her anxiety med, and the obnoxious one went to the office manager and then HR, saying she thought the nice one went to get a weapon to hurt her. Like what? She didn't even own a weapon. And the nice one got fired. I was absolutely shocked. Any lingering respect I had for her was gone. I've had a lot of jobs and met some awful people, but she was the most stressful nightmare who could boo-hoo her way into getting pity parties on cue. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 15. 
This one coworker changed how I approached working. I was in the workforce for a decade when I decided to take a job with a very small woman-owned company. It was just the owner and two employees, myself included. I worked my butt off and was very successful the first few months. And soon, the other employees started to brazenly slack off, eventually calling in often with what became the lamest excuses weekly. Once, she was out for almost a month because of a vague family issue that I'm convinced was made up. Our boss was so lenient because my coworker had been there for years. I ended up working harder and extra hours, even weekends, to keep our clients happy and the business going strong, which I soon realized just enabled my coworker's awfulness. I quickly burned out, got the hell out, and never let any person or business ever exploit and take advantage of me ever again. Curse you, Becca. And ends it with the person's real name. Just perfect. These people just get so selfish they don't realize how it affects everyone around them. Did this woman feel she had no recourse whatsoever? Was the boss just too blind to see it was this woman that was carrying the business? Just no recognition? Story 16. This woman named Lori used to be an operator at my work. I've since replaced her. I worked as her assistant for two years. She always made my job ten times harder than it was, and would very rarely pay attention to the trim system on the winder, causing many, many, many paper blow-ups. Huge pain in the butt to clean up. Every shift, I knew I'd be working my butt off for a solid 12 hours. Looking back, I get why she was the way she was. She was literally the only woman employed on the production floor and was constantly trying to prove herself. She eventually got so fed up that she stopped caring. Near the end of her time there, we actually got quite close on a personal level. Some of the stories she told me about what some of the guys would do to her actually made me so sad for her. So what started as my coworker from hell is now actually one of my good friends. Funny how things work. Story 17. We worked in a store that sold specific and fairly expensive products, and there were four of us working there, including the owner. The woman in question was basically his second-in-command. She seemed totally cool at the time, but then I got fired. And then, a month later, our other co-worker got fired. So it was just the two of them, and when the owner was busy, it was often just her. It wasn't long before he realized that she was stealing hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of products when he wasn't around, and that she'd manipulated him into firing his two other employees so she could have the store to herself. He has new employees now, and they're awesome. I plan on visiting a lot more once I'm vaccinated. Story 18. This woman who hated me and always had to be better than me. It was awful. First time I've ever cried at work. One day, I caught her in a bold-faced lie. I had taken a day off. She said when I returned that the boss had asked questions about where I had been on my day off. My boss knew exactly where I had been. I knew because I told her. So I knew this was a lie and she was just being nosy. Called her out. She had no response but tears about how I was mean to her. It was very satisfying to see her caught in a lie by the boss after years of lying to and manipulating her co-workers. Again, we've got the office politics coming up. This has probably worked for her in the past. Trying to speak up and pretend that she's closer to the boss than she actually is. I wonder how she got away with it for so long. Did this woman get fired because of this? Story 19. An MMA fighter with serious PTSD, although it sounds like he was crazy and mean before he went to war. I have brownish skin, and he would threaten to unalive me multiple times a day at work. Once, he put me in a sleeper hold just to put me down for fun, and two other guys had to get him off. Guy was laughing maniacally the whole time. Sometimes, he would hit me around the waistline when no one was looking so no one could see the bruises. Threatened to unalive me and my family members if I ever reported it. Our supervisor was an ex-army ranger whom I deeply respected, but he defended this guy through it all, and I never understood that. Finally, the guy got fired after two years and ended up in jail for a while. But those were two terrible years. Story 20. In civil service, there was this one woman who, one, actively hit other people, two, 
changed entire times on timesheets without the original party's consent, this was a huge no-no legally. 3. Sabotaged my work and other people's. No matter how many complaints we submitted, she was never fired. Rumor had it she was never fired because she had some serious dirt on the administration. The kind that shouldn't be leaked to the press. Story 21. Girl I worked with when I was a personal shopper. She tried to get me fired a couple of times because she saw I was moving up faster than her. We both got sent to work at a different location for a couple of months, and she went around bad-mouthing me to anyone who would listen. So they thought I was a bad employee and she was amazing. I proved myself with my work ethic, and they realized she was a liar, and it definitely changed their opinion of her. I ended up going to a different location, and when she went back to our original location, she continued to say horrid things about me. My co-workers took my side and called her out on her lies. She left not long after on a bad note with them. Story 22. Back when I used to load trucks, we had a dude who lasted exactly two days on the job. His first day, he seemed normal enough. His second day, he came in drunk as hell. A real no-no when you're working around heavy equipment. And instead of getting down to business, he just kind of messed around doing a half-bad job, thereby making everyone else's job harder and making crude, intimate jokes about the other co-workers on the line. And when the supervisor told him to knock it off and do his job, he told her to stop being a shrew. Thank hell the jackass did not come back because we all wanted to kick his butt after that day. Story 23. First day of work, she lit her desk on fire. Second day of work, she ate her lunch and broke out in hives. Third day of work, she arrives at work and sat in her passenger seat until one of us went out to check on her. She claims she hurt her back trying to pick up her purse and had one of her co-workers drive her home. Would not let us use the same microwave as her as she claimed she was allergic to garlic. The list went on and on until she was fired. Oh, Marion, I wonder where you are now, as you were so entertaining. Story 24. Had an assistant who plotted to get me fired and take my job. Some of my workers let me know because he tried to get them on board with him. Eventually, due to politics, I was demoted, but asked to be put on the shift relieving him. We would work 12-hour shifts on weekends. After being relieved by phone a couple of times, against the rules, I intentionally came in four hours early and he was nowhere on site. I still got a call from him when he should have relieved me like he was still on site. I let the guards know and they videotaped him, and I got him fired. Story 25. I had a 50-year-old colleague who would message women on sugar baby apps and rub one out over his trousers. Saw him blow his load in the open office. He sat next to me. Kept on happening. Reported it. He said he had a genital rash, but admitted to messaging people on social media. I got in trouble for my accusations. Fast forward eight months, he's sitting opposite me now. He starts rubbing one out in the open office again. I recorded him. Showed my manager. And he was finally fired. He was a runt, too. Story 26. The 50-something turd that was the owner's son. Spoiled brat, reminded me constantly who he was if I stood up to him. Creepy as hell, too. Could never just tell any of the women they looked nice. Actually told me one day that my legs looked nice. I was wearing a skirt. That was the last time I wore a skirt to work for a long time. I immediately started looking for a new job within a month. There were so many other things that occurred, I was turned off from working for a small family-owned business since. Story 27. I work with a woman who's threatened by other women, especially if they're younger and have more education than her. She consistently tries to discourage women from furthering their education and constantly tries to get women she's threatened by fired. She is a Godzilla nightmare. Edit. After reading the comments... I'm sad to see that so many people have dealt with the same issue. I hope that you're all in better work environments now, or will be soon. Story 28. My manager a few jobs ago. It was a tech company. We were the marketing team, which really just meant digital marketing. She had a very loose grasp on how our various tech platforms worked, 
and one day said to me when discussing her exasperation at posting a YouTube video to our brand channel, I don't really understand the internet. She was dead serious. It was 2014. She was ultimately fired. Story 29. I work shifts. Can't go home unless I pass over my reports to the next person face to face. One particular jerk loves coming in late. Not five or ten minutes late. I'm talking 25 to 30 minutes late. Best part? She loves complaining about how everyone is always on her butt for coming in late. She literally lives five minutes away from work, so no one knows why she's always late. Edit. This was when I worked in the ICU. I can't just abandon my patient willy-nilly. Story 30. She almost got me fired because she wanted to find the weakest-looking guy to be her little errand boy. When I told her politely to go be intimate with herself, she told HR that I had been taking work out of her queue in the system. It wasn't a very good lie, though, because why would I want to do more work than I have to? I even said this to HR in the disciplinary meeting. Story 31. Not as bad as some, but I'll never forget the 22-ish-year-old girl who spent hours of one shift telling me, with no prompting at all, about how she used to be a raging H-addict, but she was over it now and had become extremely religious. She went into very explicit detail about her substance deals and the things she'd done to get substances. My shy homeschooled self was stunned. The very next day, she got fired for stealing $20 from the cash register. Story 32. They acted like a friend in broad strokes, but over time, the little thing showed that it was all hogwash. The one incident that sticks out to me to this day is when I told her that my mom was handmaking my wife-to-be's wedding dress. Most people respond with some variation of, Oh, that's so cute! And it's a fun moment. This shrew? She said, Couldn't you afford a proper one? Not such a fun moment. Story 33. She told our boss that she wanted to break into my apartment and touch all of my stuff because I bet it's all really cool. This was right after I found out she moved into the apartment next door. She would send stuff to my apartment just so I would put it on her stoop and knock on her door. Story 34. They told me the bare minimum of any task the workstation required. Poor communication, disinterested in literally everything, treated details as something obvious I should have somehow known, etc., etc. The most awkward workday ever. Story 35. Had a co-worker who always gossiped about others and would say horrible things about everyone in the office. It created a super toxic culture and caused many people to leave. Not because they didn't like the work. They just hated the culture. Story 36. We had a middle-aged lady that smelled like tuna. I was a manager and had to send her home one particularly hot day. I also had to put her chair outside after she left as it still smelled. It was such a shame as she was a really nice lady. She just completely stank. Story 37. This woman who was one of those people who always had to one-up you. Like if you cut your thumb off, she was just recently sawed in half. She was constantly complaining and miserable, and it was so draining. Story 38. I was a co-worker from hell. I was really strung out and high all the time, and a bad influence on my other co-workers. Much regret. Story 39. The guy who touched himself the entire time I was doing the onboard packet with him immediately comes to mind. Story 40. My boss. He always talked about other employees behind their backs when they left the room. Story 41. I win this one. She made a pot of coffee for the staff, but spiked it with Walter White crystals. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.